Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Today is day number 11, and we are going to discuss one of the protocol that is overlay management protocol. So next one, one and a half hour, we are going to discuss about OMP only. And uh, today, please do not think that OMP will get finished. OMP is a protocol we know that VS Smart and VS devices, they are pairing with OMP. And once they have this OMP uh, protocol pairing, what are the things happening? You'll understand all those things. But later on, when we'll go and create the policy, so once you go and create the policies inside VS Smart, again, those routing policies or control policy, whatever, there also you'll find that OMP is in action. Okay. So today we are going to learn, understand about OMP. We'll go and perform on a small lab as well, but do not think that OMP is going to be finished today. It will be there uh, till we are studying uh, this ST1 thing. Okay. Great. So what is OMP? Anyone can answer? Overlay management protocol. Yes. Yeah. Management protocol and what's what is its capability? Actually, uh, OMP is the overlay management protocol that is mm -hmm. running between the uh, V Smart and the VS devices, and uh, it is the main responsibility to. Uh, uh, redistribute the service side route towards uh, this uh, uh, vSmart or this OMP. So it is just like as a PGP and it is forming the OMP uh, pairing between the vSmart and the v VS devices. Why are you telling service side route? Yeah, uh, means uh, whatever the service side route means, maybe it is configured in the LAN side, it is the OSPF or PGP, that will be automatically redistributed into the, uh, this OMP. And OMP will uh, carry that uh, information towards the vSmart and the vSmart is having the uh, working as a route reflector and then it is going to advertise the same uh, routing information towards the other VH devices. Okay. And service routes you are telling, you know, what does it mean by service? Service route means uh, whatever the information means, whatever the routing protocols that is configured in the uh, uh, LAN side, and if you are talking about the mm -hmm. service route, then maybe it is type of the firewall type of the service, or uh, maybe the some uh, other type of the service that is customer is using. That is the services need to be advertised. So there is the three types of the protocols mm -hmm. we are using in the OMP. That is the uh, Bip Taylor routes, or you can say that the OMP routes, and the second three types is the of, three types of protocols. No, three it, types of the uh, this. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. when, uh, this uh, overlay management protocol routes, is having three types, the, yeah, of, three routes, types right? of the routes. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. OMP routes, or maybe it is the Biptela route, and secondly, mm -hmm. the TLOF routes, and third one is the service route. So, OMP route is basically uh, going to uh, uh, advertise uh, uh, from the service side route towards the vSmart, mm -hmm. and uh, TLOF is uh, having the TLOF route, and it is basically carrying the three components in the. Uh, Come again, OMP routes, sir? OMP route is basically advertising the service side routes, means whatever the route is advertising towards the uh, V smart. That okay, will, you that mean to say carry. Uh, service side VPN, right? Uh, VPN routes, right? Correct, correct, correct. Okay, correct. service side VPN. Because, you know, there are a little bit confusion service routes and service routes. Okay. Service yeah, service side, side routing VPN. means maybe it is the BGP or OSP. Eh? Service that side VPN the, routes. Service, yeah. yeah. That okay. is the, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Service routes. VPN, right? Service VPNs, okay, yes. Yes, yep. yes. And okay. uh, this T log is the second uh, routing information that is also carrying this uh, OMP map protocols. And in this T log, there is a three types of the component it is carrying. That is the system IP encapsulation and the color. And color, it is depend on the what type of the transport we are using. Maybe it is the internet or maybe it is the MPLS. So depend on the color, we can define here. Maybe it is the gold or green, whatever. So th these T logs that you are telling, um, these T logs. What is TLOC? Means TLOC is. Means, uh, yeah, I'm just explaining. Suppose that mm -hmm. uh, if any routing, means service side route that is mm -hmm. advertising towards the, the V smart, and uh, this information is carried by these protocols, means OMP. So, in that information, it is also included the system IP 
where it is going to destine means what is the destination. So that system IP and encapsulation, it should be the IPsec tunnels, means the IPsec data tunnels encapsulation. And the color means uh, what is the color where it, it need to be go? Means maybe it is the MPLS or maybe the internet. So mm -hmm. this information is having the destination so, uh, so point here. Yeah. yeah, you're hundred percent right. So these these three things that you are telling, what are these three things like system IP, color, encapsulation? That is the destination information. Means where this uh, route need to be advertised. They belongs to T log, right? Right, right, right. So yes means what type of association they have with t-lock what we are telling yeah. are they are they t-lock attributes yes uh, yes shall yes. i tell like this uh, yes yes uh, please yeah, yeah please, please one va wants to reach another va so t-lock is a next stop t-lock is the next stop yes next stop. Correct. Correct. that's yes. right for my little work whatever i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the next stop. But yes. what I'm asking here that the system IP encapsulation color, they are attributes, right? Right, right, right. So there is the multiple attributes, so, but uh, this is three attributes is mostly con uh, considered while they are uh, sending so the there are more attributes, but these are yes. the you can say they are the main or main, they are in yes, action. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Great. So you are also right. Um Jitender, uh, Vishjit, you are also right that next stop or maybe you can think as a gateway as well. 100% right. So um, you guys already know that what is OMP and what it is doing. We are going to uh, you know, dive a little bit more inside that. We'll see the OMP routes and certain more attributes inside that. And then we'll... One thing, and... mm -hmm. uh, Sanjay was telling three kind of routes, right? One is the service VPN and one is the TLA. What is the third one? I'll, I'll let me show you this. What does it mean? So if you check this particular diagram, you'll find, first of all, let's understand this particular diagram. What are the things we have here? You can see that uh, we have DC1. So this is DC1. This is a DC2. And this is one of the branch, maybe branch one. And this is other branch, branch two. Right. Now here, if you see inside DC1 that these edge devices, so I have edge one and edge two here. So whatever routes that is coming from either LAN side or maybe some other VPN side, more precisely service side VPN, so service side VPN. So those routes are nothing but Viptela routes or OMP routes, correct? Now these routes, when we, when it will go and try to reach where it will go and reach, obviously to the VS Mart. So they have some sort of OMP peer, and you can think like in X and Y direction. Suppose this is X and Y. Your controllers, you think like your controller is in Y direction, like it has. 90 degree angle with this like that you can imagine so anyways so you can see that whenever these v routes or omp routes will reach to v smart over any transport let's forget about transport whenever it will go and reach to v smart then it needs some sort of so the v smart need some sort of gateway some sort of next hop is how i am uh, getting these routes and that's why you have something called t-locks so t-locks are nothing but the gateways for the prefixes and these are the prefixes and these are the next hop or you can say the gateway okay so you can see that vs mart will go and learn the prefixes it will go and learn the next hops as well but imagine that suppose in your infrastructure you have some sort of firewall you have some sort of security devices inside vpn 10 or 20 or 30 etc so those vpns those service routes also via smart learning why it is learning because suppose in future you have to go and create some sort of policy some sort of policy called for example service insertion policy what what does it mean by service insertion? 
Service insertion means that certain prefixes you want to redirect towards the firewall and then it will go to any other exit. Okay, so that's why we are smart learning all these three components separately. So later on, you can go and create some sort of routing policies or control policy, and then you can play around with the traffic flow. That's the whole idea behind this. Yeah, firewall, you can see firewall. Uh, don't worry, we, with this service insertion, we have lab, full-fledged lab. I'll okay. show you in the lab that once you go and apply that policy, uh, first of all, we'll go and do the trace route. So it will go by hop one, hop two. And when we'll go and apply this policy, then it will go to hop one, and then it will go to firewall, and then it will go to exit. Okay, so we have lab related to service insertion. Even you can see in our... Uh, agenda as well, you'll find that we have lab related to insertion. So don't worry about that, you'll understand. At the moment, okay, uh, how, routes... how this uh, service side uh, route is uh, advertising means uh, if you are uh, saying about this firewall. Okay, so firewall service means how this information will carry towards the VSMART means uh, what is the component it will add. Yeah. yeah. So um, I will show you the configuration. You'll find that inside configuration itself, we are telling that, hey, this particular VH, what's the firewall location inside VPN 10? And since that information is there, so that's why it is advertised to VSmart. Okay. Now, this VPN 10, now you can think in other way as well. So this VPN 10 is nothing but your, some sort of connected interface, right? Suppose this is part of VPN 10. And we know that by default, the edge devices, they are advertising their the static routes, connected routes, and some other routes as well, we are going to see today. So that's why he'll come to know that, okay, this is the location of firewall. It's just the location that the VSmart knows with the OMP advertisement. Yeah, so only for the location, including the IP address, means what is yes. the uh, firewall location. IP address? Yes, location including IP address. I'll show in the uh, uh, configuration in the output as well. So you can go and check these routes. You can go and check the Viptela routes, TLOC routes, and the service routes separately. So what does it call service insertion route or policy? Service routes. Service insertion service is a policy. Service routes is the is the name. So let me go back here in the slide and you will see clear the screen. So some notes are also there that you can refer. Let's go back to the notes. You can see OMP routes are called V routes, whatever we have discussed. But important thing here in this uh, these slides the last line, comparing with BGP, an OMP route is equivalent of a prefix carried in the BGP address family or sub address family fields. So these are the prefixes. Then if you go and check the service routes, you can see that identifies that tie OMP routes to a service in the network, specifying the location of the service in the network. You know, location of that particular service. Uh, location then if, means what? Means IP, address. Are, IP address. IP address. IP yep. address. Means if you are going to do the trace routing, so it will show the exact path of the this location. Yes. Means how we can reach to the this uh, uh, firewall or maybe any types yep. of the services, right? Yep. yep. So we are going yep. to do the trace route in future lab, and you will see that how it is going towards that firewall and then coming, going out to whatever exit we have defined whatever next hop we have defined. And third, uh, your uh, T locks, and here you can see in the last line, in comparison with BGP, the T lock acts as a next hop for OMP routes. Okay, so here is spot on, and if you want to memorize in single diagram, you can see that's the diagram you have, whatever in this diagram you are seeing here, towards the service side VPN, obviously those are V-routes. If you have any security appliances, then that will be the service routes. And then you have your gateways or next shop that will be TLOC routes.
Only these things we are smart knows. And I think this is more than enough that we are smart knows. Now, apart from that, what about other routing? So suppose if I am running OSPF here, and this OSPF is, if I want to send to VA Smart, how we can do? The other question that suppose these devices know OMP, and if that OMP I want to inject inside OSPF, obviously we have to do some sort of a redistribution, right? So we know that how redistribution is happening. And again, if we are talking about mutual redistribution, so from OSPF, you want to go towards OMP. And then if from OMP, you want to inject the routes inside OSPF, etc. Remember, OMP may be big routing table. And while injecting OMP inside OSPF, you should um, you know, use certain uh, prefix filtering or route filtering, etc. So, so, is there any uh, AD value for this OMP as well? 250. Okay. It is there in slide, it will come. Okay. 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 Uh, so, let's check this, these slides. Uh, I told you that it is there in slide. If you go by the end of this OMP section, you'll find the AD, AD value in the bottom 250. Okay. All right, so let's continue. Let's understand more and more about MP. The basic thing you already know, three different type, types of route reaching to VSmart. Now VSmart, as you told that, is working as a route reflector. So it will reflect those routes to all the peers. And we have a nice diagram as well. I think we have discussed this earlier. Okay, it is not here, but we have discussed that long back when diagram was there. Oh, this one. Okay, you can refer this diagram. I have, uh, we have discussed this uh, long back. You can check this diagram one more time from your side. Okay. All right, let's move on and let's try to understand more about OMP, how it is working. So, as we discuss, nothing, you know, um, like, you know, SD, although we are studying SD1, but it's not like, um, it's a new type of concept, a new type of thing that we should know and, you know, and do all those uh, ma manipulation and calculation. It's not like that. It's it's a routing type of protocol. It's a routing protocol. Uh, main job of this protocol is to send the update to, uh, send the update to VSmart and VSmart has to take the decision because he's the intelligent device. Now, VS routers, I will go and I'll show you the configuration to VS devices. But uh, if you go there and check that, what type of routes you can advertise. So you can go and advertise um, static BGP OSPF connect, connected, etc. No brainer, it's okay, you can go and do it. How you have to do, you have to go and edit the OMP feature template. Because everything we are managing from the template, right? So whatever routes you need to advertise from myself, suppose I am VH device to VS smart, then we have to go and do that calculation, that configuration. Okay, let's quickly check that, uh, what are the uh, attributes of OMP? A few of the terms you will see here, that few of the terms that you have inside OMP, or terms or attributes that you have inside OMP, those attributes you will see inside t -lock as well. So what I have done in this series of slide that I'm going to show, so five to six slides, upcoming slides, that first of all, we'll go and check the OMP attributes, okay? And then we'll go and check the t -lock attributes as well. And you'll find few of the terms there in OMP as well and t -lock as well. Now, since t -lock is near to device, you know, here you have t -lock, right? So since t -lock is very near to device, so you can think that t -lock is your local factor for routing decisions. That means if I go and tune some attributes inside t -lock, then it will go and apply 
immediately to this particular device because it's very much connected to that device, you know. And same thing if you go and apply here to OMP, same type of attributes manipulation, it has some sort of a global effect. So some, uh, you know, line of demarcation is there. We know that OMP is huge, it's big. T-lock is something that is just working as a next hop plus it has some more attributes as well. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, make this simple. Let's try to understand the uh, attributes of uh, OMP and then we'll check the T-lock as well. Okay, so what attributes OMP has? You can see, first of all, it has T-lock. Uh, as Sanjay told that system IP color encapsulation. These are main three. And how T-lock is working? It is working as a next hop. Okay, no problem. It's, it's good. Now you can see origin, origin source of route such as which protocol, origin is which particular protocol. So it belongs to protocol. Um, I will log into the device just after two slides, this and after this. I'll show you some of the attributes, how we can see how we can find these attributes. Origin is that uh, protocol, originator is that uh, which particular IP which is originating the, uh, so OMP identifier of the originator of the route. So which particular IP who is originating the route, that's the originator, who is originating that particular uh, route or you can say the prefix as well, some sort of 1.2.3.0 slash x. Okay, this origin and originator, I think you'll find inside BGP as well. So this is not new thing. Yeah, T-lock is, is new thing. But again, it's term as a transport locator, uh, such as in BGP, you have next hop attribute. Okay. Rajnesh, uh, this originator means it's a BH, right? Originator will be BH, right? VH, CH, yes, yeah. Where yeah, we Mindra, have the yeah, prefixes, yeah. 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 We've tailored out, yeah. The branch devices, yes. Then preference, uh, you know, the preference attribute is there in BGP as well. And here you have the OMP route. Inside OMP route, you can go and set the preference. Higher is better. So more the preference, that route will be preferred. Again, it will come under... Uh, global policy because we know that OMP falls under uh, global policy or control policy. So whenever you're creating the global policy, you'll get the options, you know, whenever you're uh, creating uh, control policy uh, with related to how the traffic flow will happening, like traffic engineering related policies, you will get the option of you want to set the preference, you want to set the tag, uh, you want to set the T-lock preference. You want to set um, the other uh, other parameters. So options will be there. You have to go and choose those options. Otherwise, it will work as a default, default, default. Then service. We know that uh, network service means security related items such as firewall, IPS IDs and others. Site ID. Site ID is identifier. We know that. Uh, site ID, what is the meaning of site ID? Tag is the why we are using tag. Tag is used everywhere, either it's a ST WAN or non ST WAN environment, to do the filtering, to do the route filtering. So if you are marking some sort of tag and you are sending and you are denying anywhere, that means whatever routes that is coming with that particular tag, drop it or maybe accept it. It's up to us. So that's why. We are using tag, mainly it is used to uh, prevent from the routing loops, the tag values. And again, mainly you'll find this tag will be used when you are doing a redistribution. Then VPN, we know VPN is a type of tag itself. And we have all those uh, VPNs and the network segments. Great. So these are the attributes. You can see how many. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Eight attributes inside uh, OMP. 
and you can check the official documents as well please refer the cisco official document as well although these slides are taken from there only but but please check the official docs as well all right let's quickly move to the t log routes so let's check the t log uh, attributes we know three at the moment we know that it has color let me highlight this color and then i'll come back to others as well color identifies the link type and it should have system ip and encapsulation encapsulation is the system ip is not mentioned it is not it is not mentioned there was no problem but we know that it has three main attribute um site id is there Okay, and let me go back uh, one slide. So let's check one by one. So T log has private address attribute. T log has public address attribute. Why it is there? How it is used? I am going to show you in the upcoming slide where you'll go and learn OMP best path selection. Okay, but I'll come to this point once I will log into any of the S device. I will show you a few, few of the things and then I'll come to this section. This is in the continuation with all these slides. So private address, public address, carrier, color, obviously system IP, encapsulation, preference. You can see preference. This is the common one. We have seen OMP preference as well, uh, common in terms of name only. So you have something called T lock preference as well. You have something called OMP preference as well. Then you can see tag as well. So you have T lock tag, you have OMP tag as well. Then it has one local property in terms of weight as well. And in BGP, we know that BGP, maybe you know about that. So weight is there and local preference is there, right? in BGP and these are something that they are attached to that particular uh, prefix. That means that once you go and apply weight, local preference um, in that BGP uh, path selection criteria, these are the maybe first or second one. And then it will go to third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the other attributes. So they are following some order. Here also, I will show you that they are following certain orders. Okay, so just for your reference that these are the attributes, how they are going to be used to uh, select the best path. Um, here you can see best path. I'll come to this slide after I will log into the device and I'll show you this T-Log example as well. But first of all, I just wanted to clarify that yes, we have these three different type of routes some of the other things as well. I uh, I will do one thing. I will perform on a small lab task. We'll go to one of the edge device, okay? And uh, any any VH device will log in. Inside that, we'll go and create our own prefix. So I'll go and create, uh, say, 99.99.99.0 slash maybe 24 and it will be working as a connected, right? So I'll go and create one loop back called loop back 99 on this VH. And then we'll see that how it will be reaching to VS smart. Okay, then we'll go and check that if this particular device having OSPF already running inside OSPF, if we go and uh, add one, say loop back uh, 100, and then again, we'll see that how this loopback 100 will go and reach to VS Smart. Okay, so let's do these many tasks first of all, and then I will go and check the best path selection, how it is happening. All right, so I have to log in. All right, so my vpn is connected and now i just wanted to log into the 
we manage. So let's try to do the RDP. And trying. So we'll go and do it. Perform all these tasks slowly, one by one, step by step. I think someone has put password here. Let me type the password. First time login is really slow here. But once you log in, then it will work fast. Oops. Okay, login. And let me open the party session as well. I think we have everything here in the MR. What is that? Remote desktop something. Okay, here we are. So we can go to DC. And I should increase the font size. And let's go here and make this 18. All right, so uh, where we want to check the routes, I'll go and show you this inside one of the edge and then the VS Smart, one of the VS Smart. And for this VS Smart also, let me go and increase the font size. So first of all, we'll go and check the basic commands related to OMP inside the VS Smart. Access four things you can check. First of all, show OMP peers. So you can go and check show OMP peers. And uh, how many PS it has? You can see VH1, VH2, so four VH and one VH smart. The up times, you can see the uh, route, received, installed, send. And nothing has been installed here, but if you go to the edge device and if you go and check show OMP PS, Here also, I can't see any routes that has been installed. Uh, again, I'll come to that point, what does it mean? But three different types of routes we have, right? OMP routes, service routes, and T logs. So if you want to check OMP routes, you can simply go and check show OMP routes. I think is there, that's why. Show. Actually, we have done so many things with uh, with this particular device. And this device is not learning any prefix from VS Smart. That's no problem. Uh, we log into a device where we have some prefixes so, or we can create our prefixes and advertise. So there is no problem on that. Uh, if we go and check, uh, let's go to the VS Smart first. Let's check that if any policy is there uh, enable or not. Show policy. Well, you can check sure and because in running also the policies will come. Okay, nothing is uh, configured here seems. But some OMP related configuration is there, like send path limit, send backup paths, graceful restart. Now, what does it mean by all these things? I'm going to explain you. Everything is there in our slide. Okay, coming back here. So this device having some issue, maybe I don't know what template we are running here, why it is not getting any routes. Please quickly, let me go and check to 
V D C one V H two. If some routes are there, then I'll explore the routes. I'll show you that how it is there in the V S Mart. Show O M P peers. I will increase the font size. Let me quickly check. So here also I am seeing that nothing has been installed. Let me quickly go back here to the V manage. Let's go to the configuration and templates. Let's see that it, it has some correct uh, templates assigned. Okay, so I can see that DC V edges, they are not assigned and it is assigned with the V, where it is? B S smart is okay. CSR, okay, I can see that uh, Nothing has been attached with this particular template. I think we have <clears throat> detached those template while we are doing the lab, so no problem. Let me go and attach one of the device. One of the device will leave it as it is. So DC one VH two. We share. Attach it. Oh, it needs some variables, correct. Okay, so we have done so many manipulations that now this device don't have the proper and uh, addresses and all. Okay, so you need all those proper variables, otherwise it will not work. And that's the problem, no problem. Um, let's see how, what, what are the things we can do here? It's not big, a big problem. Um, okay, so if we can upload from somewhere, if we have something old uh, somewhere, some templates, Let's see. In the desktop, if we have some, okay, um, DC VH list. This is what type of file is this CSV file? Seems yes. Let's see um, if it will take all those variables. This is, okay, this is not a valid source. Let me try one more time. If if I have something there in the desktop, I can upload from there. Otherwise, I need to go and um, you know populate that information. So at the moment, we have done some configuration mismatch here, and that's the reason um, uh, it is not getting any prefixes. Maybe we don't have service side. Uh, VPNs configured, but no worries. I'll go and spin up one new branch device, okay? And that branch device will get all those prefixes and everything. So let's go to configuration and uh, template. More about this process that I'm going to do at the moment, I will show you later on when we'll go and study about uh, PNP, plug and play. But at the moment, let me quickly do the deployment for this particular branch device. Branch type 2. This is the serial number. Okay. Attach. And is getting all those variables. If it is, then I can scroll a little down to move next. bottom I have so many tabs in my laptop to do next and configure the device let's quickly go and log into that device via this remote ng that is nothing but your 
branch one of the branch device branch 2vh1 you can see that uh, still that uh, template push is in progress so that's why you can't see the name of the device once it is done you will see the name will get changed no control connections established at the moment so that's why it is not showing anything let's see where we are in the pushing it is scheduled let me increase the font size so validation is successful and the template is going via some some of the checks device is offline updating the configuration device came online click configuration device device options okay so let's go back here let's wait for some more time and behind the scene things are happening and meanwhile i'll go and i can increase the font size okay appearance change make it 18 okay and apply So I can see that uh, template has not been pushed. It is scheduled. Think is that click on configuration devices and device option. So you can go to the configuration devices. And sync is pending. Okay, so this process is going on at the moment. Once it will be done, then we can go and check it. So uh, it's no problem on that. Meanwhile, you can see that we have some CH devices as well. So let's check CS devices as well. Meanwhile, it is going on. So I can go to any of the CH device and let me increase this font size for the CH as well. Now, you will find that there is little difference in terms of configuration in CH and VH while you are checking the configuration via CLI. Okay, and you should know both. So if you go and if you want to check the OMP peers and all, what you need to do inside CS devices that you have to use keyword called STVAN and then OMP peers. That's the keyword here, STVAN. Uh, non CS devices like NVS devices, what we are doing, we are simply using show OMP peers. And if you want to check show STVAN, OMP routes generating the output please wait you can see that we have lot many OMP routes so many routes are invalid you know unresolved INV U again we will see that why it is invalid why it is unresolved so it's not a big deal but uh, here you can see that you have the code and INV stand for invalid and then you can see uh, T lock unresolved U stand for T lock unresolved and other uh, code as well that whenever you are generating the route you're seeing all these codes as well okay so from here uh, we can go and verify all those three different type of routes Obviously, we, we are going to discuss more and more about this. So don't worry. And you quickly see that if VH came online, no, still it is in progress. So check from here. Let me make some more space. Okay. Show SD-WAN, OMP, and you can see what options you have. So you have OMP routes. 
you can go and check OMP services, you can go and check OMP T logs. Okay, so next you can go and check the OMP services, and it is telling you that inside 10 you have VPN. VPN is it is getting all this information obviously from the VSmart, but uh, this is its own local route. Don't worry about uh, these services. Uh, we have lab related to service insertion in future. Then what is the third component? Third component is the T logs. So you can go and check show OMP, show SD WAN OMP T log. And while checking this T log, you can see the attributes as well in detail. So let's see. Let's check any anyone. So T log, T log entry for 10.1.0.1. This 10.1.0.1 IP is a system IP for DC1 VH1. Now for this particular lab, we know that we have DC1, VH1, and then you have uh, DC1, VH2. Those system IPs are 10.1.0.1 and 10.1.0.2 like that. So this is belonging to this IP. Then transport MPLS, obviously in our lab, we have two simulated transport MPLS and internet. And then encapsulation is IPsec. Then you can see that peer. This peer is nothing but VSmart. Status is chosen, installed, route. You can check the code as well. So this is CIR. This is chosen as a best route, it is installed. Then attributes, you can see this attributes, installed, you have some encapsulation key. Remember inside OMP, what OMP is carrying majorly? OMP is carrying the key information, right? IPsec key information. And that's why you can see this encapsulation key, encapsulation protocol, encap SPI, encap authentication, encap encrypt. Then OMP, what it is carrying? Three different type of routes, right? Web Taylor routes, service routes, and T logs, correct? Then what OMP is carrying? It can carry policy. So these are the things you'll find inside OMP itself. Uh, you can see all these public IP, private IP port, etc. We have checked the attributes of OMP as well, like site ID and VPN and tag and those things also you will see here. Let me scroll down. So here you can see that site ID, overlay ID, preference, region ID, tag, scale entry. I will cover this as well. Just don't worry about this. What does it mean by a scale entry? Weight is there, version is there, uh, generation ID, carrier, restrict, we know about restrict on demand. Groups, we know that uh, this is VS smart group bandwidth and all other things. Uh, so many things you can see that OMP is carrying. Oh, it's really big, big, big protocol, big thing. Let me see if it is done. Still, it is not. Uh... Online, great. Still, I can see the sync is pending. Let's see that still it is there. Okay, no problem. So, um, we'll we'll continue our lab. So don't worry about that. We'll go and create something something inside CSR as well, and uh, we'll do that. Either it's a CS or VS, it's okay. I'm just checking why it is not coming up. It should it is showing attached to one uh, in sync. Let's see. 
if it is live branch to vh1 then it will change its host name that i am not seeing here at the moment no it's not online the still some sync is in progress some maybe some circuit is something that uh, i can check all right so the target was that to show you that you have different type of routes you have uh, omp routes or webtailer routes you have service route you have uh, P locks that is working as a next stop, correct? Okay. Now, before moving further, I want to show you one more very important thing that will be used um, if you are working in ST1 operation. You are using this particular uh, command day by day, and it's an important one. So, if you go and check show ST1 OMP uh, routes, let's check the routes. And inside route, you can see that you can go to any of the route and you can check the detail of that route as well. So let's first of all go and check, take any of the route that we are getting from VSmart. Uh, these are the prefixes you are seeing here. Okay. Again, uh, when you read this particular configuration output, so let me do one thing. Let me quickly copy this to the notepad so I can explain you a little bit more about this. Okay, because there are so many things here. At least 20% let me copy. And let me open the notepad is there. here and let me increase the font size format i think font uh, 16 may be okay my god it's a little bit big it's decreased to 12. all right so here you can see that prefix where i am it is very important to check that where we are so we are in one of the branch that is branch one ch1 okay so branch one ch1 is getting this particular uh, prefix if it is zero 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 that means you can think that this is self originated route i am originating that route and this is common term in vgp as well means self-originated route they are showing 000. Although I am sending this particular route to VSmart as well. So that's why I am receiving back this route. Since this is self-originated route. So while I am receiving this route from the VSmart, I am marking this as invalid. 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 Okay. Now associated with this route, you can see that I know this route, what is the um, next hop or what is the gateway. So next hop or gateway will be system IP, color and encapsulation, right? So that's why you can see that this route is associated with these three attributes, T log attributes. So this is the prefix. This is nothing but with teller route and this is nothing but your T log information. Okay, great. So leave that to ten dot three. I think this ten dot three always originating originated by itself. Let's go and take some other yeah. route except this ten dot three. Let me go back to I have a small question. What do you call invalid? Why it's invalid uh, because of local? Hmm, that's invalid. Uh, uh, this invalid is there and you uh, unresolved T log. This is normal routing thing now suppose i am a router and i am receiving the route suppose i am receiving one two three one dot two dot three dot four from different different places and that particular route i have to install in my uh, in my memory in my routing table so i will check right if 
that particular route having reachable next stop or not and you know this thing that it will trust to itself so if it is self originated route means if i am the next stop itself correct then why i uh, i will get that route from some other place so that check will mark this as a invalid and um, again I, i i told you that maybe we have something called omp based path selection where we are going to discuss this point as well but it is invalid because this is self originated route that's the one line answer we got it thank you and what is the status rate uh, in between rate 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 is redistributed oh yeah redistributed to itself you can see all those prefixes oh. are there can you scan scroll a little bit up i see somewhere you'll find this red is redistributed and red is rejected okay um let me go and take any of the prefix that is not originated by this particular router means it is learning this thing from somewhere and i can't see can the all the routes that it has it is itself means self generated only okay i will check some loop something will maybe there and this is also not coming up since we have done so much research with this particular lab part <laughs> we are not getting any route installed okay So we have to identify the best route uh, through these instructors C and uh, CIR, right? Yes. Is connected or installed and uh, received route. C for chosen, chosen route. Okay, chosen route and uh, then uh, redistributed routes and uh, then R means uh, this uh, received route, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So here you can see. Uh, actually with this particular output it will tell you that i means that branch 1 ch1 and my omp peers are these two so these are the two vs smarts i am connected now from these vs smart i am getting 14 routes now these are for receive you can see route receive route install route send okay and that r is different so both are different r let me quickly show you that oops a little bit down so you can see c for chosen r is for resolve so both r are different in omp peer uh, you can see r is means route is but anyways so it's very important to understand that okay from vs smart 1 and from vs smart 2 i am receiving 14 different routes but i am not installing any one inside my routing table why because all those 14s maybe all those 14s are invalid routes okay and not only that as a vh i am receiving 14 routes but i am sending 14 routes as well but since it is not showing anything we have done the show mp routes you can see that nothing has been installed it is not showing anything none of the routes has been installed in the routing table due to some issue brother okay. mm -hmm. for sending routes what will be the command this is for receive routes right so it will be sending not for different command or yeah you can see all three at same place send install oh, okay last one is received. received. Oh, okay. yeah okay. this is the send yes okay got it got it okay so this is one of the very important thing that you can check that how many prefixes you are learning from vs smart the moment you showing null 0 0 it's not learning anything okay and uh, likewise in dc also i have seen and i need to bring up this lab one more time that it is not uh, let's see now in this case it is not receiving anything 
from VS March, so there's no point that it will go and uh, you know install because route AC we can see zero. Why? Let's see. Okay, because we have done some changes here and we don't have any service side VPN in this particular DC1 VH1, okay? No worries. Um, let me try one more time. I can go to DC VH1 and attach the device. DC VH1. This time I'll try to go and attach DC VH1. And let me go and click next. Attach. I don't have variables now. We have play around all this with all these variables. So that's why it will not come up. I should know all this information. And unfortunately, we have, a, have not saved any backup configuration. Okay, so no worries. Um, I will show you this OMP lab. I'll, I'll restore this lab, okay? And then I will show you that lab uh, in next section. Meanwhile, what we'll do, we'll go and complete our theory. Okay. All right, great. And uh, before I, uh, moving there, let me quickly go and check to, I have any configuration backup of something in this particular system. I have backup in my laptop, but uh, uh, in this too, I have, I don't think so, I have backup here. This is CSV for branch. These are some scripts for van. Okay, no problem. Traffic generator, um, this is TCV edge list. No, I don't have, unfortunately. Okay. I'm pausing this recording. So I will restore this lab seems some of the devices variables I don't have at the moment. And we will perform the lab in the next session. Let's continue our theory because that is also time consuming. It will take at least 20, 25 minutes. If it is not completed today, all this theory, we will go and complete in next session. So in this slide, I have given one of the example related to T-Log, although we know that T-Log is nothing but your next hop, right? And since you have system IP color and encapsulation, you'll find that your T-Log will be different. So here you may have encapsulation as MPLS. Here you may have encapsulation as internet. This is the same thing it is explained here. So if you have any common route, say 10.1.1.0, and you want to send to VSmart, you have two different paths. You can go via this direction, or you can go via this direction. Now both the direction, they have equal hops uh, from VSmart. Uh, so when VSmart will learn 10.1.1.0 slash 24, he will know that one of the next hop is MPLS and one of the next hop is internet. If you do some sort of T-lock extension, then it will learn four different next hop. Now these next hop, in this case, you will see that in this direction you have 10.1.1.0 and then MPLS and then uh, four, uh, three different things, right? Color and encapsulation. Encapsulation may be same, IPsec, uh, all the places, but with this color, it will differentiate that it is coming via with, uh, which particular transport. 
That's the only thing explained here. You can have a look on this and we know this part as well. Now, one of the very important question that you will get inside your interviews is that how that uh, OMP doing best path selection. Okay. And this is actually very interesting and very important. So let's uh, give some 15 minutes here. As all routing protocol, whatever routing protocol we have, whatever step number one, two, three you have in all the routing protocol, here also you'll find one, two, three. And later on you'll find that uh, it is little bit similar to BGP attributes. I think in BGP you have maybe 13 uh, criteria like one, two, three, four, five, it will go and match one and then two and then three and four and five and six, like that it is in order. Here also you will find, I think seven to eight, uh, let's explore and explore it. The point here is this, that VSmart, how it will do this best path algorithm or loop, avoid loop avoidance mechanism, it is listed here. So first of all, the step number one is this, that whenever VSmart will go and get any of the prefix, it will go and check whether the OMP route is valid. Now, what does it mean by valid? Valid means that do these routes having a reachable next hop? Obviously, if next hop is not reachable, no point of you know learning that route so it will ignore it so that's check number one you can think this as a check zero as well this is the primary check it will do then next if OMP route is valid and it has been learned from same web killer device select the OMP route with lower AD distance no brainer right if it is learning some route from uh, via OSPF or EIGRP, we know the AD value of OSPF is 110, EIGRP is 90, that means it will prefer EIGRP. All routing protocols are doing like this, lower AD value, they are testing lower AD value. Now if one and two, they are same, then you will see the attributes of OMP and TLOC will come into the picture. Then it will go and check the OMP route with higher OMP route preference. Okay, so obviously 10 and 100, it will go and prefer OMP route preference with 100. Now, how you can set? You will learn this in the control policy. Let's see, point number four. Now, if your point number one, two, three are same, then how it will select the best path? Then it will go and select the OMP route with higher T log preference. Remember, this preference thing is there in OMP as well. So OMP preference. And then you have here in T log preference as well. Both have the preference values. Okay. Great. So if one up to four, they are default, means you haven't done any change in that and they are same. Then it will go and check point number five. Then it will go and check that origin type. Okay, so the protocol. So I'm getting that route via the connected or a static EBGP OSPF, IBGP unknown. Why? Because whenever you are sending any prefix, suppose one, two, three, two, three, zero slash 24 to be a smart, VSmart is very smart. Not only he is learning the prefix, but he is learning the origin as well. So he knows that this particular prefix I got from OSPF or EIGRP, I think ESD. So OSPF, EIGRP or OSPF inter area or maybe uh, E1, E2, etc. or BGP, etc. Yes. He has, you know, top to bottom, the priority. We know that connected routes having uh, AD value zero, the static having AD value 
one ebgp having ad20 actually behind the scene it seems like it is choosing that route in terms of ad values okay now again if uh, one up to five they are same so then it will go and check the omp route with higher router id same thing happens in bgp as well if you go and check all these points then if suppose up to one to six they are same then let's see so what what will happen so up to one to six all those uh, criteria is matching then a vh router select the omp route with the higher private ip address okay Again, its criteria falls under the IP address. So 10, 10, 10 versus maybe 11, 11, 11. It's not a good example for private IP address, but you can think like that. Now, if we a smart controller receive the same prefix from two different sites, and if all the attributes are equal, we a smart will choose both. So, you will see in the VS Mart for certain routes, it is installing via MPLS, the same route it will go and install via internet. Now, receiving the routes is different. Installing the route is different. Again, sending means you are sending. So always remember how many routes you receive. There may be chance you will receive 20 and you will go and install 10. And there may be chance that you will go and send maybe 30. Okay, so all these parameters have different, different, uh, different, different, maybe different, different values and different, different meaning as well. Yeah, okay? so here is our question. There is, uh, you are saying the R, I, and N. The receive route, installed route, and uh, the send route. Send routes, yeah. Okay. So this little route means it is it belongs to the, the topology of the, the routing table you can consider, right? And so how many maps in that? means it is receiving the uh, total 20 path and in that 20 path, they are uh, selecting the 10 they are path. Not path. As a... These are routes, hmm? prefixes. Okay, prefixes. They are yeah. the prefixes. And what is this installed route? So installed route means that Okay, um, maybe you will not understand like this. Let me try to show you in some sort of animation. Actually, I'm just correlating to the, this BGP. Means we have the BGP table and this level table and the, the uh, routing table. So, okay, Wh whoever site is this? This is one of the nice site. Okay, um, if I can have the animation. <laughs> I just wanted to show you something so you will understand. Um, I, I want to identify the difference between receiving the routes and installing the routes, okay? So let me see if I have any diagram where I can show you that. Okay, I can take example from any of these diagrams. So if I am here, I think this is okay. From here we'll understand. See that this particular S device having one of the Viptela route one 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 zero. Now, how many transport it has? You can see in the diagram it has two different transport T one and T two. Think as the MPLS uh, internet etc. Okay, so when it will go and send the uh, routes, obviously he will go and send his routes to the VS Smart right. So 1110 via T1, 11110 via T2. See, same routes. <clears throat> I am sending, suppose I am VS, I am sending to VS Smart. So I am sending two routes. Okay, that doesn't mean 
that vsmart will go and install these routes in his routing table you can think like this at the moment but yeah vsmart knows these routes okay these are these two prefixes i am getting now from here also it is sending two different routes obviously what vsmart will do it will uh, update this and it it will update this route right now think like this that i am sending these two routes to vsmart and i'll write here 1110 slash 24 via t1 and one one okay one zero itself same route via t2 okay and i'll i'll take one more so i'll go and take one 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 two zero slash 24 one more let's take one more one one two zero slash 24 right maybe via t1 itself now think like this so i am sending three routes to vsmart right but due to any reason if t1s these two t1s t1s are nothing but circuits right some some i next shop connectivity due to any reason suppose if these t1s are down and down right so that means vsmart got those routes but when it will go and validate that oh do my next hop is accessible or not so he will do some sort of you know after every one second he will send some omp update he will find that these t1s are unreachable that means he will not install those rights routes in its routing table right he will only install this t2 route means whatever he learned via the t2 so receiving the route is different thing installing is different thing and then sending is different thing now it may have 100 routes right from different different VH he, he has learns uh, he, he learned those routes so he may send him 100 routes he may send him 100 routes right you got the point Yes, yes, but here we are using the one term that we are setting the, the one prefixes to the two different T logs, right? Yeah. Maybe it is the T1 or T2, correct? Right? Yes. So uh, one single route is receiving by the two transport and it is going to uh, receive, uh, it is uh, forming the receiving table and the uh, routing information base and they're uh, going to uh, uh, receive this route, okay? But uh, here you are using the one term that uh, suppose that if T1 is down or T2 is down, and in that case, VSmart is knowing that the T1 is down, so I have to install only the T2 routes. Whatever the T2 prefixes that I am receiving, that yeah. I have to uh, install these. That is the yes. meaning you are saying here, right? Yeah. So suppose that in case of the both the transport is up, up right? In that scenario, what will happen means this? The receive route will be the same and the install route will be same, right? Uh, again, it's uh, right, but not 100% right. Yeah. Okay. It is right, 100% right only if all the criteria will get matched. So just now we have discussed about these criterias. And in this criteria, if all the points one to six they are matching then it will go and you can see here the last line it is telling that if v a smart controller receive the same prefix from two different sites and if all the attributes are equal the v a smart will choose both so both he will receive and install no problem at all Okay. And the opposite side, uh, uh, Rajnish, like this model will install fine, but how, how about VH? VH will also install both? Now, VH, this is also a good question. So, VH smart, and sake of simplicity, suppose it has 10 routes, okay? It also has 10 routes. So, how many routes that VH smart will receive and install? Let's take that okay. VS Smart will go and take 20 routes. He will install 20 routes and he will send 20 routes, right? 
correct in case of the only single transport so 10 is received from the one branch and 10 is uh, from the different branch yeah. but if you so, have the, having the two different transport mm -hmm. then the same route uh, same prefixes will be advertised from the both the transport and this b smart is receiving the uh, 20 routes uh, from uh, sorry uh, the 40 routes from the one uh, 20 routes from the one side right yeah okay right so 20 right, 20 right. 20 and now coming to your question so so V is smart how many routes he he is sending to him 20 correct so now this particular device suppose this is r1 so r1 is receiving 20 routes but he will install he only install 10. 10 routes yeah yeah, yeah. and he will that send is the 10. thing i was going to tell that right? yeah 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 because those only 10 will 10, get yeah. invalid because 10 Correct, he yeah. has generated so it will become yeah. invalid exactly that was my understanding okay yeah so whatever the route that is self-generated, they will uh, deny that route, right? Because yes. it is already available in their uh, yeah. uh, routing table. Yeah. Otherwise, you know what will happen? Some sort of routing loop will happen. So Correct. you trust your self-originated route. Uh, otherwise, you know, loop will be there. Great. Good question. Great questions. You know. All right. So. Um, I'm I'm going uh, to stop here. Uh, but we can I go back to the third mm -hmm. point? I want to understand one more time. That time I didn't disturb you. So not third, I think second part. If the OMP route is valid and doesn't learn from the same Victor device, yes, what else? Then we uh, draw on diagram and explain this point number two uh, just for yeah quickly. So in the diagram. Say, yeah, yeah. From here also you'll understand. See, we are smart. So mm -hmm. Suppose one route is there slash twenty four, and it is reaching to VS Smart via two different protocol, OSPF EIGRP. So VS Smart will go and prefer EIGRP because its AD value is ninety. That's the meaning of this. Now, these are underlay protocol you're talking because it's a con VPN zero right due to this. Yeah, because. Uh, in the configuration itself, we are doing something called OMP advertise and then maybe OSPF or EIGRP. That is there in this these slides, um, you know, and we'll discuss this more in the upcoming. But if I go a little bit further in these slides, you'll find that, uh, let me clear the screen. You'll find here that uh, what does it mean by advertise globally? What does it mean by advertise inside VPN? What are things you are advertising? Okay. What are the commands, etc. Some terms are there. How many maximum WAN interfaces we may have? How many um, how many paths that OMP can learn or advertise? Those things will be there. It's still uh, so many uh, so many concepts are there. What is end of rib? Uh, what are different type of timers? I told you long back that I will explain these things. Okay, so still it will take more than one one hour, one hour thirty minute to discuss all these concepts. So the basically this OMP mm -hmm. thing basically it pretty much similar to the BGP thing, uh, like the copy from BGP concept. Huh? It's a BGP, yes, lightweight BGP, yeah. But uh, but one thing I just wanted to tell that, uh, okay, we're telling that it's a BGP, but uh, uh, OMP, again, this is also a very important thing to know that not only that it is sending, receiving the updates, routing update, but it is doing the key exchange as well. Key exchange, like IPsec key exchange, right? And apart from that, the policy exchange also it is doing. These things are not there in BGP. Means we can do it, but uh, by default, OMP has these capabilities, these two. And BGP can do n number of things, like it can, it can do anything. It can do encapsulate with uh, VXLAN, even eVPNs are there, MPLS, you know, IPv4, IPv6, BGP is a big protocol, no doubt about that. It is customized protocol for customized Cisco SD WAN.
Okay, guys. Uh, so what I will do that for next session, I will build up the lab so I can show you some uh, lab related task as well related to OMP. And we are going to discuss more about OMP and its features and attributes means some components related to OMP in the next section. But I hope that few of your concepts got clear uh, from this and if you have time, please go and check this particular uh, website as well. They have explained all those things very nicely and neatly. You can have a look on this, what is this? Network Academy. Network Network Academy. Okay, so I it can... It's a very nice document. Mm, yeah, I can see it's nicely documented. What is T-Log, Fabric and all those things. You can check this also. Mm, OMP, Westpath Selection. Can you paste the link? Uh, you have to paste some dollar, then I'll paste. Yeah. No, it is. I think it is the free of cost. Yes, yes, it's free of cost. Uh, because any link you're pasting, I'm going to paste in the WhatsApp because some, some, once the meeting is closed, so we are not able to pass the link. Yeah, you can copy now. Anyways, I will paste in WhatsApp as well. And uh, Biswajit, if you want to install the application, then you can go to the uh, Play Store, you can install it. I already have Which it on my mobile. Yeah, the same. Network Academy? Yeah, Network Academy. Yeah. I already free, yeah? yes yes at last the uh, this uh, trainer will say that you if you are like my video